Okay, we're at the halfway point. Um, amazing. We've typically had in the high 40s all the way up to 60 plus people the whole time, which is amazing. I think people are really jonesing for getting out there and training with other people, and this is the next best thing. So definitely appreciate the support. This is wonderful stuff. Um, I wish I could be out there too. Um, I'm having a blast running this and watching it and be a part of it in the background. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping to get to do a, a future, you know, a real life one, and you guys are all invited again. And if we have to do another virtual one, you're still invited. Um, okay, so here's the schedule. Like I said, the normal, hey, do healthy things. Uh, make sure you're healthy enough to do this stuff, all of that good stuff. The other disclaimer, which is, hey, be good to yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt other people. Nobody wants you to do that. All of the normal stuff. Uh, be a responsible human being. Shouldn't have to tell anybody, but, you know, we're in a nice litigious society, so here you go. Uh, and lastly, stay on mute. Everybody's been awesome about that. Wonderful. Pin the instructor. So the next person to pin is listed as Dan Lohman. Um, and then they'll be your primary person to watch. He's, he's, he's got the best hair cut of a lot of people. Um, ask questions in chat. I'll carry them forward for you if you want. But again, speak up when it's a when it's a when it's a quiet time and they ask for questions because uh, there's nothing quite like answering a verbal question. It's a little easier than a written one, uh, and you get your personal feedback. And then lastly, turn on closed captions, and you can catch anything that you can only barely hear, and you can also read back a certain amount. So with that, we've got uh, Dan Loman's title slide. He's going to share probably some Comatone Kali He's He's really good. Watch how this man moves or if he's going to tell you, share your stuff verbally, listen to what this man has to say. Um, I'm always impressed with him. So, Dan, thank you for being here. I'll turn it over to you. Can't hear you, though. Can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah, it's a little, little bit echoey. You're good. Hi. Echoey. Sorry. Yeah, it's a little game, probably. So, um, thanks, Kai. You know, I owe you something for all that, all that words you're saying about me or whatever. So, if you guys have difficulty hearing or whatever, um, let me know. But I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, my name's Dan Loman, and I represent Cafeteria Mandrigma. And we're based uh, across the U.S. and parts of Europe. Um, June, June's over Europe right now in Italy. And uh, real quick, I'm under Grandmaster Shelley Millspaw. He's out of Colorado, um, Longmont area. So um, if I do anything wrong, then you can report, him to, report me to him. <laughs> so anyway, um, this, what I wanted to kind of cover today is a little bit of a spotted daga. And I like a spotted daga a lot because I think that's where a lot of the um, fighting concepts really are, are hidden, you know. And I, I, I get, I'm lucky enough to travel back to the Philippines a lot, and our area, um, Comatan was created by Ernesto Crisis, right? So it, it differs quite a bit from um, Grimmy Crisis or uh, modern Arnies. Uh, it's kind of like when you go to the Philippines, you see modern Arnies in the Philippines, it's quite a bit different from modern Arnies in the States, just because he evolved this differently, right? Um, so um, that's the flavor that I'm going to share with you guys today. But uh, and then the gross region. Um, You'll see some of the movements that I do today when I do with body and daga. There's certain core movements that are in, in our system. And you'll see it in Lycan Scientific. You'll see it in, uh, if you go back to Negros, you'll see it in a lot of the old Negro systems. And some of these systems have had no contact with each other. Now, I know our um, Grandmaster Ernesto and, and Mong Ben, they, they do each other right. So they're, they obviously talk to each other. But then, you know, Panay, if you look at the islands right next to Negros, right? So I'm sure there's some, some trading. You know, I don't care about. What came first or apple you know chicken before the egg i don't care about that right i care about movements and what they do so talking about that is i do college school streets most uh, also under um coach arnold nazar right but if you look at what the tool they use they use a sands bar right and sands bar can be much much bigger um much bigger much bigger weapon if you were to try to interpret um the growth style with a sands bar you really can't do it i mean there's some movements that, that are similar but you really can't the reason why it's because uh, here's a modern analog, right? And you can see it's quite a bit shorter, right? So the movements, some of the movements you would do with the Taliban wouldn't be movements that you would do um, with, with the sand bar, for instance. Uh, some, this is a modern style of, of a Taliban. You know, you can get trainers that are really cool, you know, this is from Hog Mountain, and you can get trainers that are 
you know, the, the Palmer stuff's awesome, you know, because you can really display the awareness and, and everything else as you do it. Um, this, this, for reference, this is an older style, okay? It's an antique. You can see it's quite a bit thicker in the back of the spine, okay? And then you'll see another, so this is a traditional Negro style um, sword. You'll also see if the real antique column would look like this. Okay? So that's quite a bit different. So for me, it's really important when you understand your a spy dog or whatever system you're doing, is you use the right sword. Because if you don't use the right sword, you won't be able to interpret the movements correctly. Right? And it'll, it'll just become a jumbled up mess. So also, if you look at traditional Espada Yadaga, look the dagger. Way big, right? So it's like this versus like this, which is what we most of practice with, including myself, right? So, so they're they're much bigger. And the reason why, if you start doing some like KI, for instance, right? Some of the blocks and some of the facades, even in, even within Negro styles, you're going to find out this this short is a disadvantage. You're going to find you get put on the knuckles a lot, right? So definitely a longer a longer dagger for sure. Uh, this is live dagger. So I'm going to use it today. Um, it's probably thank me for that later. But so some of the core emotions, you know, you get trained a little bit longer. FYI, um, so how I say streets But anyway, let's talk about the, let's talk about the actual art itself. And I'm just going to use um, the first three, four emotions of a spy dog because that's important. That's what you use regular training. Use a stick as a So when you think of a spy dog in general. Yes, the first thing you're going to start noticing is when they grow up and these big. And these are the three core motions that you start off with basic again and all tighten things up, but basic first. And these first three motions you're going to find out, you're going to find them all the time, you're going to find it uh, like scientific, you're going to find all the different styles. You'll even find it in every source of right in the Philippines, but it'll be modified. That being said, these are the first four motions of one, just a walk right in, a thrust. Okay, I cover, um, you hear the crush my cover, and then coming back to here. But those first three motions of one, two, three are going to be found in everything. So again, one, two, three is going to be found in everything. If you look at my footwork a little bit, or my lean rather, right? You can grab that. Look at my feet for a second, right? What's happening here as I do this is one, I'm going to thrust forward. That thrusting motion is going to be really important. We're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to lean back. And the lean back is to create a space. I don't always have to do that. I can still do those three motions here. But those three motions, you're going to find in everything. Okay? If you find, um, if you go to the gross, you'll see it. Again, grandmasters who really didn't have contact with each other that they know of, right? They, 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 they still have this motion, you know? So a couple of things is you won't notice it again until you start getting the bigger daggers. But everything in here, when you start doing things, is lines. Lines of attack, right? Lines of attack. So from the side, even if I practice this motion right here, you see these lines that I'm doing? Okay, over here. That's it. These lines that I'm doing here. This is our first spotty dog number one, right? So one, if I just stay focused here, I can do it without the step. It's okay, okay? Or I can stay here. But if you see the lines, if you see the lines, I'm very much doing this because I don't want to do something stupid and cut myself, right? So why you start learning how to flow is because you understand the lines that are happening so empty hand, you still understand these lines, so you don't cut yourself. Whether it's with a dagger or a knife, so a spotty daga will, you know, instead of doing stuff like this, right? A spotty daga will help you find and understand these lines as you start manipulating things and then you start doing things. So our first spotty daga is what's called one. Well, we got, we got, we got twenty. Okay. Numbers don't really matter. They're all teaching a different concept or a different principle. So our number one, for instance, and again, you'll notice this because the common move, 
you may know the systems you've already trained in. It doesn't mean that necessarily one system copied another system. It doesn't really matter, right? So, one, this thrust forward is very important, okay? Three is here. Okay. Don't worry about it. Just put that. So, one, two, three, over the head is four and five. And if you look, this is the one. So it's one. What's the question? Uh, yeah, so I'll talk about that question. One, two, three, four, and five, right? So I've learned this motion. Okay, I think that's the question you have. Can you read the question for me over here? Let's see. Okay, why the overhead uh, four and five? Okay. So the question is why uh, two thirds overhead is four and five. If you look this way, you want. Is that you reading this? Oh, that's not. Where's the question? Oh, yeah, it's me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I answer my own questions. It's amazing. So, so again, one, two, three, four, five. You can loop it to where you're doing the same technique of one, two. If you notice right now, this is all home. It says here, it's a thrust. So as you practice this, one of the most important things is learn to thrust that. So you practice these techniques, learn to thrust that, come back, learn to thrust that. Because this is, you know, not still from Jim Bobby, right? The killer, the killer kind of thing, right? This can be the killer, but it also can be the killer, right? I know you can do that with the same thing with punch, right? But this is, if you want to practice this by the dog, concentrate on the dog a lot. There, thrust that, boom. Thrust that, and here. That's our number one. So again, it's one, two, three, four, and then five. Our number three, as we pick one, a random one, is number three becomes one, two, three, I'm coming through, four, and then five. So again, one, two, three, four, and five. The data feed right now is very, very basic. Okay? Later, it's going to start coming back up here and start getting more, more advanced. But it can feed here, it can feed here, and it can feed here. And you can do all those other things. When you feed up, palm up, palm down, depends on position. I'm not getting too much today. Okay, but let's talk about translation now. So if I take, you'll see this motion everywhere. Let's just take the motion. Five dot number three. One, two, three, four, and then five. One, okay, two, three, four, and then five. Right? So you can incorporate this arm there if you'd like to do, right? So it's just that like one, two, three, four, and then five. So the diagram, talk about the diagram a little bit. If you talk about these motions of one, it could be a check. It could be a check through, like you do AI, hey, it could be here. But even if you look at this motion of, it's still, right? Learning this is basic first will help you with a couple different things. Tell me a couple different things. When you, we catch a lot in our system, right? We will catch the the wrist, whatever, it doesn't really matter, right? If I get too close, which I'm here, if I'm too close, I'm in punching range. Does that make sense? So that lean can help me get out of punching range, right? That little lean of that shoulder. I can send it this way, I can send it back up through this way, it doesn't really matter, right? But that first motion is one, two, I'm too close. And then I'm looking for whatever I want to. Or, one or two, you punch it, oh, it's too close, right? Then grab it or whatever. But that lean is important to learn how to learn from us body to body. So, with, right now, this is the basic triangle footwork. In the, we're Filipino martial art. In most styles, nowadays, modern up a little bit, right? They're a little more modern. So, don't care if you're right foot forward, 
left foot forward, or whatever. And I think that's true for modern styles and for medium, medium range. Because a medium range, it doesn't matter if the foot forward. It doesn't matter if the foot forward, right? Because we turn into a stick. But with sword, it does matter. Because if I come here with this, I'm right leg forward lead, and I get my feet, but I'm basically left foot forward lead instead of a right. But now I'm completely range to get hit. So there's no protection. With stick, I don't care as much. I feel like I hit. But sword is deadly. So in the in the growth program, okay. so in the growth, and your classical system, for lack of a better word, is it's right foot forward. It's right foot forward always. Now, why is it right foot forward? Because if you take the stick in your hand, sword sword doesn't really matter, okay? You can clear all the way across your body. All the way across your body. And when you're going long range, that's important. When you're really reaching out for stuff, that's important. If you go this way, you automatically cut yourself off. You can feel it if you do this in the air. You can feel you, you cut yourself off. Because I'm reaching, right? I'm trying to reach out and get this long range because it's sore. I don't want to be close. So, what will happen is, you already know this one. You already know this. This footwork may not work for me to do that. So how do I get my right foot forward? So what they'll do instead is they'll go to the side, this parallel to the side, and then they'll go off into the right foot forward, trying So put that down here. Yeah. you guys. I got it. Come here. So what happened is a right. I'll be right on that side where I'm still right foot forward, right? But I'm able to step in. I'm able to come in. This is too close for me as far as modified step. This is in probably so street smokes and cold times in the last when they, they go out. So strike comes, I come and hit and get my strike, right? One more time. I can hit boom and I'm out of range. So what can I do on the other side? So the other side is I step here, I'm in range. I want safety first, so I want here. I'm out of range now, but then I come in range to hit. So the start will come, I want here, and then I'll come in. Just right. So slow the bit as I can I'm offline, and then I come in with the right foot forward and do my strike. Because I want my lean. I want my big leg case. I want my bodice. I want my albino. I want all that, all the weapons available to me. Another thing you'll notice is that typically in the spotty yoga, you don't square off. I mean, you don't, uh, not square off, but you don't do this a lot. And the reason why is that if I do this, my dagger's too far away. So if I do this, my dagger's a long way. I try to stay square enough for the get that extra four inches picked up. Make sense? All right. So, so I can still hear me. So, all right. So that's what I'm trying to do. So if I step off line again, it's here. I still go to block up for safety, and I come in. Some of the old traditional grandmasters, you'll see here, boom. So here, boom, they'll do this. Left will come, and they'll do this. That will pop over on the right foot. Because I'm right, I swear on you now, he comes here slow. I'm out of range, okay? It comes to the left, I'm out of range, but I came in. And I allow my right foot still to be forward. So you'll see that sometimes where they'll just do, they won't cross necessarily, right? But they'll do a little step. And again, they can be faced. You'll see this in the movement styles, they'll face the weapon lock. So here I face. Here I face as I do it. So that's some of the things I'm trying to accomplish. And I can apply that whole slide of value and mentality with footwork with empty hand as well. You know, and with sword and knife and, and, and everything else. So if I use knife as an example, say I use strikes, there's my strike, there's my movement. Okay, I'm out of range, okay, completely. But maybe I'll learn that from a spotty dog. He strikes the other side. Oh, if I slash, if I'm good in check, that's great. But if I miss that check, or he pulls me tracks, I'm cut. 
So it's safer for me to go here, let it pass, and then come in and do my technique. If I want, if I want to come in. Again, I always want to prefer attacking the hand first. He fanging him, but like he fanging stand, right? Everybody knows that term. Okay, so that's a, that's an important concept. Have we got to do this? So any questions so far? Any questions? No, sir. No? Okay. All right. So uh, okay. All right. So a couple other things real quick. So in this is the debate on this one, right? In the growth style, they may not care about the edge because it's just a it's just a tool, right? And college social street smell will be more edge awareness and things. But you'll all you'll obviously see when you do things that forward motion. Let's talk about that for a second. So one, that thrust. What's that going to teach you? If I take the first three motions of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, it doesn't really matter what I get, and I keep range. I don't always have to be elastic, or I don't always have to retreat, but it's building to me right now. One, two, three. I don't have to. But I hit whatever target is available. And this person here can also give me the space necessary to be able to hit his hand, right? So if I'm in close, this can give me the necessary space to hit what I want to hit. Every, not every one of our five objects, but a lot of them at first start with that one, two, three motion. One, two, three. Cause the four motion. What's important is what comes after. And I don't need too much here, but let's say you fly down into one. One, two, three, four, and five. So that motion. Why I want to learn so much to thrust, to thrust, to thrust, okay? It's this reason right here, okay? He strikes, to thrust. And that's my interest. Right? I didn't know what to come forward with. That's my hit. That's my instance. I still have to worry about the other hand, right? That's okay. So that would be an example of using this body diagram number one. Body diagram number two, three was one, two, three, four, and five. If I take this motion, it gives an angle two, and it gets my hand. So, he tries, there's my interest, and there's my hit. I'm going deep because I want to know how deep I can go. I can just as easily go, and it works well, just as easily go punch. On angle two, I can just as easily go punch. Okay? I don't have to insert this hand here. Okay? I can start the hand here and go right into it. Okay? But that crushing motion of whether my right foot is forward, left foot forward, when I practice it, I want that thrust, 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 thrust. Okay, does that make sense? Good. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. So let me hear your questions. If you have any. Now's your time, folks. Come off mute and uh, fire away at, at Mr. Dan. Yep. Dan. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Hey, Good. could you quickly run through all five? June used to show this to us, and I've forgotten the other versions. Sure, I can give you the first five. Yep. So, I'll just stay. So, one, two, three, four, five, and number one. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five is number two. Ah, that was it. Number three is one, two, three, through, and you'll see, and then five. You'll see a couple different variations of this. The hit through, or the turn to the heat on that. Mm. And then four will be one, two, three, a deflected down would be one interpretation, right? And then five gotcha. will be one, two, three, four, and come back up. So those are the first Awesome. Five. Thank you very much. Refresh my memory there. You're if you if you train it, 
as a drill only, you will never understand the spotty daga. Because the spotty daga isn't meant to be done with steps one, two, three, four, whatever, right? It's meant to apply your, your crusada blocks, your parries, your, your, you know, the more advanced techniques, and then the follow-up. And that follow-up could be anything out of these concepts of these 20 as body dogs are going to level 15 at the clock, right? That each one's teaching, and that's for every system, I'm sure, right? If you can't, if you get stuck in the drill, you'll never learn how to fight. You know, does that make sense? You'll never learn how to fight with this body dog. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Any other questions? That's really nice, Dan. I, was, I did actually have a question. <laughs> Um, so we actually do that too, and I and you do. I notice you do that second thrust the same way I do, which is your blade flat to the ground. Yes. I know some people do it vertical to the ground. I'm wondering, is it is it definitive one way or the other? I I prefer flat, but I'm just curious. I, I've only learned it flat. I've only seen it flat, and the reason why it fits to the rib cage better. That's the explanation I've learned from it. I don't know if that's true. Um, with a spike, it depends. If it's thrusted, I've always seen thrusted this way. I've always seen everything else this way as far as like hitting the hands, cutting, you know, blocking with this knife or whatever. What's interesting, if you look at a spotty dog, uh, this is, everything's hidden, you guys. You just got to figure out how to unlock it or how to teach it to unlock it for you. And hit within one, two, three is one, two, any of these blocks, okay? Any of these blocks are all hidden within that motion. So, is it how do you how do you apply it? So that's why the that's why understanding lines is so important. You're not just you're not, not you're not just moving your hands. There's lines that are taken into context, and within those lines you'll find blocks hidden. You know, you'll find out what you need to do with your hands. That's why when I all the time in general, everything for us is chambered, right? Everything's chambered. I always know where I'm going. It's never here. It's here, it's here, it's here, or it's here. Because I need to know what to do, you know, and, and how to unlock secrets. And if I keep everything here like this, I'll never really truly be able to unlock the secrets I find. I find. We did have one other question and I just noticed in the comments now, I missed it earlier. It was, can you show some free flow with random strike? I guess we can. I love show some free flow with random strikes. I assume that's with a uh, spotty dog kind of free flow. Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, can you see it though? I don't know if the camera's if it gets too probably. Does it get blurry? I'll see. So. We'll see. Excellent. Well, before I, before we run out of time here, is there anything else you want to announce or any social media how people can follow you or? or, or no, we were supposed to have Arnold here this year, but it was <laughs> treat everything right. But I, I will. I typically have events in the fall because it's too hot in Florida. So typically around November, December, January, February time frame, I'll have events here, and, and we typically have something like this. We have five or six different instructors teaching things. I'm on kmoflorida.com on on the web and also KM of Florida on Facebook or just tag me personally on Facebook. I think June had a question. Oh no. This mango shake, what June say? I said I think he had a question. Okay. Can you do six can can, can can you do six through twenty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> 
real. Good work, Dan. Twenty-one and twenty-two yet? No, the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. That was a great walkthrough, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for uh, spending your time uh, sharing it with us. I appreciate no that. No problem. Thank you, guys. Excellent.